This is chapter three, control volume analysis. Uh, this is a short video that demonstrates the Bernoulli effect. In a moment, I'll show a, a short video, but before I do that, I wanted to talk a little bit about Bernoulli's equation. So recall that on a streamline, you have three components of energy. Kinetic energy per unit mass, the pressure energy or flow work per unit mass, and the gravitational potential energy per unit mass. And these three add up to a constant because there's no losses along a streamline. Remember, Bernoulli's equation assumes inviscid flow. So I've drawn uh, some streamlines here. The red lines are streamlines, and the black line uh, labeled with a capital V is the velocity vector field. And you can see that the local fluid velocity is everywhere tangent to the streamlines. And so no flow crosses a streamline. As a result, remember this, that where streamlines are compressed, uh, we have regions of high velocity because the same amount of flow that passes in between these two streamlines passes out and by continuity, uh, over on this side, we have more area, and so the velocity must have gone down because we have the same flow rate. So now let me show the video. Uh, what it involves is a couple of pop cans and a straw. So a couple of empty pop cans. I'll turn the volume up so you can hear me blow between the cans. I set them about a, a finger width apart. And then I take a straw and blow gently at first and then slightly harder. And we'll replay that just in case you didn't see it, in case it blinked. So that's quite an unusual effect. You know, when you blow between two things, you might expect them to come apart, but in, in just the opposite happened, actually, they came together. Now, you might understand that intuitively if you understand Bernoulli's equation, um, uh, but now I'm going to go through the details uh, of that explanation. So what I've got here is a top view here of the two pop cans and the straw, and I'm blowing a jet of air between the two pop cans. And I'm going to zoom in on this region here in the next slide. So we're going to consider the flow as it constricts between the two cans. And so I've drawn uh, the upper and lower can here in yellow and the streamlines. So you can see the streamlines constricting, uh, moving into a higher velocity region between the two cans. And so what we can do is we can pick arbitrarily any streamline and write Bernoulli's equation from point one to point two. And that's what I've done here. So we have the kinetic energy plus the pressure energy plus the gravitational potential energy at one equals the kinetic energy, pressure energy, and gravitational energy, of course. And of course, this whole thing equals a constant along a streamline. Now, this is a top view, and there's no, or you can consider a streamline where there's no elevation change from point one to point two. So Z1 equals Z2, so we can get rid of these two uh, terms. So now what I'm going to do is just rewrite that with those two terms cancelled out so that we uh, will have a simplified equation. And so here we have it, Bernoulli's equation with the potential energy terms missing. Now, by continuity, as I mentioned, when you go from point one to point two, uh, the cross-sectional area of the flow uh, gets restricted. This is an incompressible flow, so V1A1 equals V2A2, and A2 is less than A1. Initially, it would be a round jet. As it passes between the uh, cans, it would probably stay mainly round, but the area for the flow would decrease. So we can expect the velocity at 2 to increase. And if the velocity at 2 increases, that means you have more kinetic energy at 2 than you have at 1. And that kinetic energy has to come from somewhere. It comes at the expense of the pressure energy. And so the kinetic energy goes up, and uh, the flow work or pressure energy goes down. And so we can conclude looking at Bernoulli's equation, that the pressure at 2 is less than the pressure at 1. And indeed, the pressure at 1 out here, uh, where you have the straw, 
or near the exit of the straw would be atmospheric pressure. And so the pressure in this region here on the can is going to be less than atmospheric pressure. And so that region of low pressure between the cans caused by the accelerating flow is what draws the two cans together. A better way to look at this, or another way to look at it, is to look at the pressure distribution on the outside of the can. So when we have no flow, we would just have this atmospheric pressure, a big circle, you know, the atmospheric pressure acting all the way around the can, and of course the forces would be balanced. But when we have a flow between the uh, cans, as I've shown here, the pressure uh, is suppressed below atmospheric pressure between the cans, and so there's a pressure imbalance, and in fact it's the pressure on the other side of the can here that actually pushes the two cans together. Of course, the same thing's happening on the lower can as well. And so we end up with a, a net resultant pressure force that draws the two cans together. So now you should uh, completely understand uh, what's going on here.